Welcome to the uh, Bentley Offshore SIG uh, for June 8th. We are going to uh, be discussing dynamic super element today and uh, the new module that's been added to SAX uh, in version 10. Um, in it we'll be discussing how to use the DynePack module to generate dynamic super element data and transfer transformation files. We'll be discussing how to use wave response module to generate the dynamic super element force file and uh, we'll be using the dynamic super element module to then generate uh, the reduced stiffness matrix, mass matrix, and reduced load vector um, for use in other applications. So I just wanted to talk a little bit about why we added this module and you know why it's different than uh, super element. Uh, I'm sure most of you are familiar with the super element module that's already in SAX. Um, that is limited to static solutions. So you can only use it to re re reduce the stiffness matrix. Um, and so if we look at our little equations that we might remember from college, some maybe better than others. Uh, we have our force equals kx. This is just a, a basic spring equation, right? It's a, it's a static stiffness solution. Uh, and these are matrices. And when you have a super element, basically what you're doing is you're taking a portion of your model and you're reducing that stiffness matrix into um, a smaller, smaller um, stiffness matrix that's used in your solution. Uh, in dynamic super element, we have more parts of the equation, which means that we have to have more reduced matrices. So we'll have um, you know, our mass times our acceleration plus our uh, damping coefficient times our velocity and then our stiffness times our displacement. Uh, I used a U here. It could be an X or a U. It's kind of a uh, typo, but they're both used in, uh, in equations. Um, in our in our solutions, we don't actually have to do any generation of the um, or any input for the damping. Um, we use a, a rally, rally damping coefficient uh, to or rally damping to generate the, the damping matrix. So we do a reduced damping uh, matrix, uh, but it, there's no real input that's used to generate that. Um, so. Let's see, um, we're going to um, have a, a SAX model file. These are the basic steps that you need to take in order to set up your model to, to generate a uh, dynamic super element. Um, it's going to look similar to uh, doing a super element file, but there are some differences. So um, in our SAX model file, uh, we're going to do retain degrees of freedom at the interface joints. This is where you do um, your joint uh, fixity. Um, you'll just enter in the 222, 222. These are the uh, retained degrees of freedom. So these are the translational X, Y, and Z and rotational X, Y, and Z um, uh, points, uh, degrees of freedom. Um, and then we will uh, retain the translational degrees of freedom um, at the interior joints. And by interior joints, I mean the joints that are going to be reduced. Um, and that will be used to extract our mode shape. So really, we want to, we want to retain the all degrees of freedom at our interface joints because we are going to take into account rotational stiffness, rotational mass at those points. And then we are really just going to look at the translational degrees of freedom for the uh, interior joints. Um, in the dynamic super element or dynamic input file, excuse me, uh, we're going to specify the uh, the DSE option on the DynOp2 line in the dynamic input file. This is just going to tell DynePack that we need to output uh, some some additional files from DynePack that will be used in our dynamic super element analysis. Um, 
and then we're going to run the dyne pack analysis. So that's going to create these two files. There's the DSC data file and the DSC transformation files. Oh. Okay, so I'm just going to jump over to um, SACS and kind of show you uh, what we're what we've got here. Uh, so this is this is an example. And this is going to be uh, a wind turbine. This is where um, this module is really designed for uh, wind turbine analyses, uh, but it has other applications. So the the example that I have is a wind turbine. So as you can see here, you know we have a jacket structure with a uh, tower. Right up here at the top, we have the interface joint. Okay, so here we have our uh, translational and rotational uh, retained degrees of freedom for this interface joint. And we're going to be taking this and making this entire structure down here into a super element. So if I go click on any other joint in the structure, should not render it, you can see that every other joint in the structure, except for the fixities at the bottom, will be um, uh, retained uh, retain degrees of freedom from translational direction. I suppose it's not every joint, but it's the joints that you want to reduce right into your uh, for your uh, mode shapes. Okay, so that is the that is the model file that we have, and then we have C state input file. Just to show you that real quick. Really, all it is is that we have a, an additional wave load that's applied to the structure. So we're going to take DynePack and open up the dynamic input file here. And here's the dy dynamic uh, DynePack options. So we're going to do 20 mode shapes. Uh, we you know, apply our structural density, 7.85 tons per meter cubed. And then here on the DynePack 2 line, um, we have this DSC option. So this just says we're going to generate the dynamic super element data. This is really the only difference that you're going to have between a traditional dyne pack analysis and your dynamic super element analysis in your dyne, uh, dyne pack input. Um, and then the other lines are just uh, uh, joint weights that are applied. These are just additional weights for your, uh, uh, dyne, uh, for your mass matrix, essentially. Okay, so, so that's the dynamic input file, and then let's look at the run file. So here, we're looking at the run file. Um, I'm going to extract these mode shapes, and I'm going to input my C-state input file, my SACS model file, uh, and then we're going to have this additional DynePack input file. Uh, you can see here that we're still going to output uh, a mode uh, mode and mass file, so this is our dyne mode, this is going to be our mode shapes, our mass matrix, uh, we're going to output PostView database, which is going to show you our, our mode shapes, uh, this OCI file is just what the C-state loading looks like on the structure, and then we'll have these uh, DSE dat and DSE transformation files. The DSE dat file is used for dynamic uh, super element, and then this DSC transformation file is used for the uh, force, um, is the input for the wave response module to generate the reduced force vector. Okay, um, so if we run that analysis, we will hopefully see no error. So we've generated this, these files. Now if we try and look at these files, they are um, they are binary files, so fortunately you really can't look at these. But if you're interested in looking at the structure, you can always go to your PostView database and then look at your uh, deflected shapes. Apparently I'm having some issues with my the location of my dialog box. I think it's popping up off screen. But um, this is all going to look the same as when you um, when you do that with uh, a traditional dy dynamic 
input. And you can also look at the listing file. So if we go in here, we can see the output. So we'll be able to look at our mode shapes, look at our, um, you know, all the information that comes out of dynamic uh, fan pack. And you can look at your mass participation, mass participation factor, and all that good information. So uh, there's going to be some additional information that comes out that's specific to um, the um, the dynamic super element uh, portions of the of the module. Okay, so that's how you run DynePack. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like and share it with others. If you want to see more like it, please consider subscribing to this and Bentley's other channels. Thank you and see you next time.